Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Dave's Faves. And today I want to talk to you about a composer who I admire very much, but haven't had the opportunity to really discuss previously. And that's David Diamond, the American composer. He lived between like 1915 and I think it was 2005. Around there, he lived to be like 90. He was, he was fairly elderly when he finally went. He was a very, very well-regarded composer in the 1940s and 50s until, like so many things happened with so many composers, the serial interruption happened, and his music became, well, it disappeared. It disappeared almost entirely, and it was a terrible shame. His style was uh, romantic-slash-French-influenced, I think. I mean, he wrote a, 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 a you know, piece in memory of Ravel and stuff like that. And he was also, um, well, his, he became more chromatic and, and challenging as he got older, but he wrote a tremendous amount of music. And fortunately, a lot of it's been recorded, but a lot of it has not. Uh, there are three violin concertos, for example, t 11 symphonies at least, 10 string quartets, and, you know, all sorts of orchestral concerto and chamber pieces. And, and yeah, very, very, very high level of, of craftsmanship in just about everything that he did. He was also extremely outspoken as a gay man at a time when that simply wasn't done, and he was Jewish. And so he, he liked to say that his, his music was, was uh, disregarded because of those factors um, and because it was tonal and romantic, which may have been the most important factor, because if you got rid of all the gay Jewish people in classical music in, in the 1950s and 60s in, in the United States, well, a good chunk of them would have disappeared entirely, wouldn't they? So I, I wouldn't exactly not put it all down to that, although, of course, you can't disregard it. And, and he was also just a really difficult guy. He was a character. You know, he liked dishing dirt on his colleagues. He was very outspoken. He, he offended just about everybody. As a youngster, he was supported largely by Dmitry Metropolis. I mean, he had, he had all kinds of stuff going on in his life, even as an older guy. Um, you can see an interview with him, actually. It's a wonderful interview with him on the David Diamond website from the Library of Congress. He's, he's, he's interviewed by Ellen Taftzvillik, the uh, American lady composer. And, oh, he's just, he's just having such a good time talking about whatever he feels like talking about and, and telling stories about his colleagues. And it really is, it really is fun. It's a lot of fun. And, and uh, I, I, I met him and remember him vividly. And he was, he, was, he was a personality. But his music, let's talk about his music. His music began life as sort of Stravinsky and American neoclassicism. You know, the school, right? Piston and, you know, those people. And, and then, and then it, he became more and more sort of individualized as he went. But it's really good music. And it doesn't sound exactly like any of those other people. Leonard Bernstein recorded his fourth symphony, which is quite beautiful. But there was a series of symphonies that Delos originally did. But they were licensed, I believe, from the Seattle Symphony under Gerard Schwartz. And Naxos has them now. And this one makes an absolutely wonderful start. Symphony number one and the second violin concerto and then the tone poem or fantasia for orchestra called The Enormous Room after E.E. E. Cummings. These are really, really lovely works. Now, the symphony is a very springy, athletic, rhythmic, you know, you know early, you know, American sounding kind of piece. Um, almost Copelandesque in places, and I, I just love it. It's just full of energy and, and a wonderful tart lyricism in the slow movement. It's marvelous. The violin concerto is, like most violin concertos, or as a violin concerto, let's put it this way, should be a more romantic, lyrical work, a big work. It's in three big movements. It really deserves to be heard, and it's, it's quite splendidly performed by, by Ilka Talvi, violin, and uh, Schwartz and the Seattle Symphony, and then The Enormous Room, which is a beautiful 15-minute or so long tone poem. You get a good sampling of his orchestral accomplishment in this, on this first-class disc. Absolutely first-class. And uh, I, I really recommend it very strongly. I, I return to it quite frequently. 
And it's taken me a long time to start talking about Diamond. I hope to do more. There's just so much music to discuss. But in this favorite series, I would be remiss if this were not included because it, it was, it's been a favorite since it first came out on Delos. And when it came out as a CD on Naxos, I was so happy that these performances weren't going to disappear because I really don't think his music has been as well treated as it deserves to be. Not even by me. So go figure. Anyway, um, if you haven't heard Diamond, give it a shot and give the first symphony a shot. I think you'll be very, very pleasantly surprised. The Violin Concerto, too. I mean, they're, they're just, it's just beautiful music and, and personal and individual and interesting. All of those things. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.